president's pushing changes to the workplace today, including more flexible hours. But Money Watcher Larry Glazer says, how about just getting them hours, period, as in jobs, period. Um, the focus seems to be on everything but. What do you make of that? You know, Neil, no question this has been a particularly challenging environment for working families in this country. Look, as a small business owner and as a parent, I understand what's going on with families, and it's very, very difficult. Working longer hours for less money and costs are soaring. I mean, gasoline prices, the barbecue, taxes going through the roof. But this is not the way. This is not the answer. The last thing working families need in this country is another expensive government program to support that will benefit a few people but be supported by the many. What the real issue is, this is a distraction from what's holding back this economy. I and mean, we've got much bigger issues, like putting people to work, getting the economy going. We aren't even addressing those issues. The regulatory burden alone from the Obama administration's first term is roughly $70 billion a year, according to the Heritage Study. Confidence it took six years to recover for small businesses. That's holding them back. Tax policy, roughly $2 trillion of money stashed overseas. That's not creating jobs here. That's not paying for health care, not paying for education. We've got to fix those issues before we start addressing new government initiatives, new government programs that sound great, but they don't help a lot of people. Larry, they're saying that is the White House and those who push these initiatives, that they are helping people, that we're getting steady job growth now, that we wiped out the jobs that were lost. Uh, throughout the recession. So the trend is their friend, not yours. What do you say? Yeah. Well, look, these come at great expense. There's a cost to these programs. And look at this program alone, right? I mean, there's one piece of the program that was proposed that's roughly $20 billion a year annually, annually, just increased costs. I mean, who do you think's paying for it? There's no silver bullet. There's no magic wand you wave. You got to put people to work. And the way you do that is you encourage companies to hire, you incentivize them, you give them confidence. In other words, get them in the door and then we can argue and quibble about what other benefits to provide them, whether to give them a higher minimum wage. But Absolutely. the first goal should be a wage, period. Hey, you, right? you got people looking for jobs. Help them get to work without worrying about providing benefits that only a handful of people are ever going to get. And they're very expensive to implement. Working people that go to work every day don't get those benefits. They should be equalized. Let everyone get a fair chance at getting a job before you start giving out golden parachutes to a certain number of people. Look, this is a special interest package, Neil. If you look at it, it's not benefiting the majority of Americans, but they're the ones that are paying for it, and they're sick of paying increased taxes that they're not benefiting from. Well, it benefits Apple if they all get government paid for uh, iPads, right? right? Well, I guess there's a handful of people that do benefit in that all regard. Right. Larry. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, always good having you. Thank you, my friend. Larry my Laser. pleasure.